Welcome back everyone! In the second episode with Kenneth D. King, we learned three more things about his array of talents. Firstly, Crazy Bella and her crew became their own hashtag when Kenneth started developing some Barbie pieces for his niece. Two, his epiphany for using silk organza to take the pattern information from vintage clothing without ruining them. And three, his PDF journey that gave him an ongoing income, but also gives us as sewers or sewers access to his depth of knowledge. You're listening to Sew Organised Style Podcast, produced by me, Maria Thea Harris, Susan Goodwin of Measure Twice Cut Ones Patterns, and Anne Wally, the Pattern Whisperer. Oh, and keep an ear out for his two life lessons that he learnt at the age of 13. You won't be the only one who has to listen to Kenneth's podcast more than once, because we sure have. Tell us about the Barbie story. Tell us how that happened. Well, you know, it started, well, I'm, you know, I started sewing making for Barbie. That was, that was really where it started. But in Mm -hmm. January last year, my sister-in-law is my husband's niece's daughter is now, and she lives in Melbourne. So she's Barbie age. Her name is Charlie. Oh, Charlie. Barbie age, and it was decided that maybe Charlie might like Barbie clothes, which was a very gentle command performance. Um, so, yeah. you know, I thought, okay, what the hell, I'll buy it because, you know, it's fun. And, and so I started making these Barbie clothes, and I was posting them on Instagram, and I got this email from the fashion editor of New York Magazine saying, mm-hmm. hey, we really love what you're doing on Instagram. Can you make us some clothes that replicate these looks from the collections. We're doing an article on Barbie as influencer. So they sent me these four photographs, two of them I hated, but they were the two that I liked. And so I, I wrote back and said, well, I only have time to do these two and I want <laughs> money for it. And they said, sure, can you get it done by the 20? I'm like, oh, okay. And so, and so you know, the, the fun thing about Barbie clothes is I used to share studio space in San Francisco with a painter named Marshall Crossman. And she always talked about what you learn by jumping scale. And so, you know, going from human size to one sixth scale, which is what Barbie is. Yes. It puts together entirely differently. So one of the looks was a peak lapel jacket. You can't make it like a peak lapel jacket because it would be, you know, like look that thick. And so I had to really kind of, I took a, a completely different approach with it. And so I made the two outfits and it was kind of funny because I told the fashion editor, I'm not making clothes that you can take on and off. I want to install these on the dolls. Okay. That I want to install. Well, the assistant, when I, I emailed her the Friday before the shoot and said, okay, I need the dolls now. And she said, oh, well, the photographer wants to shoot. I said, so she said, so just send the clothes. And I wrote like in, in like this big, no. <laughs> and so I got this immediate email back, like, here's my number, call me. So I called her and she said, well, you know, the photographer wants, basically he wanted to play Barbie. It's like, not on my dog. No. So, so, uh, so I said, okay, if I'm going to make clothes that come on and off the doll, I have to start over and mm. you need these Tuesday morning. And, you know, as someone who works with the magazine, I understand that if you don't have it on Tuesday morning, you're in big trouble. Mm. And so I said, I told your boss, this is what I was going to do. And so what I'm going to say now is send the dolls. And she emailed me back and she said, you know, well, you know, at seven o'clock on Friday evening, I said, I'm here. No. I'm here waiting. So so they messengered the dolls over and I installed everything. And so if you look at Instagram, you know, my my assistant made her first appearance and it turned into yes, you know, she does. Were, I, no, seriously, but what was funny is, you know, it just kind of it kind of took off. It was like when the dolls arrived, oh look, the intern and the fit model have arrived. And you know, so it's like my assistant says pressing is important. And you know, I mean it was this this whole story and then when you know i called it the top secret project and when when i you know what's kind of funny is no one really got kind of how macabre this was but my assistant and the fit model you know there were two boxes with the packing tape and they're sitting next to it you know and it was like that you know the, the top secret project is ready to go it's like the other two girls are in there and so then you know it, it and it just kind of turned it just kind of 
took a, took on a life of its own from there, you know. And then when where, when Crazy Bella came in, I was making these little pink ball gowns, one for Charlie, one for me, and. <laughs> I had this, the Barbie, the body with no head, but I thought this is going to look weird in photographs. And so I, I had this crazy head that I, it, with, it was with a pile of stuff. And I thought, you know, just pop that on her. And then in my mind, I heard the words crazy Bella. And I'm like, yes. crazy Bella thing. And crazy Bella is a thing now. She's got her own hashtag. And, and oh, oh, good. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I don't know where this is going. It's just, you know, it's something to keep me from uh, hearing what little hair I have left when I <laughs> you're not going to be bored yeah you know also it's fun like making the i mean well i'll do this off camera so she doesn't get embarrassed but um you know crazy bella she loves her dresses but it is a fully lined <gasps> oh, oh it's fully lined oh oh my gosh oh this will zip oh, oh my goodness look at the fit on that dress oh, oh yeah well, where this particular pattern came from was some years ago. Actually, it's what found, what helped me find my place in New York. I did this doll project for a toy company in San Francisco, and it was going to be – it was design an evening outfit, and then they would produce it in China. And if it flew, then I would be on QVC. That never happened. But they paid me 3000 bucks for this thing. And so – So right. That, that – you know, I, I keep my patterns. I learn. Keep your patterns. Yeah. Yes. I, recently, I, I did this stupid thing because, see, I, I always say never throw your patterns away, and then mm. I broke that rule because my <laughs> landlady back in 2005, she she wanted a dress to wear with the turquoise necklace. Now, I'm thinking, you know, when you hear the words turquoise necklace, you think Southwest, Ralph Lauren, you know, squash Ooh. that. So when I went for the fitting, I said, you know, I kind of like to see the necklace. What does it look like? And she came out with this velvet box from Harry Winston, and it had in it a gem quality turquoise and diamonds in platinum with the matching earrings. Oh, I can't. So I, I, yeah, I, I, it kind of made me weak at the knees because I had not seen anything like that that wasn't wow. the last. So, you know, I had that damn pattern for years. And finally, I think it was about three years ago, I thought, she's never going to want this thing again. So I threw oh. the damn pattern away. And sure enough, six <gasps> months later, Kenneth, this is Georgette. I want another one of those dresses. I thought... What were you thinking? And so I had, I said, I need the dress back. I got to take a pattern from it. So you're the expert on tracing off patterns. Well, you know, the, the, yeah, the copying, copying yeah. a garment. Cause see, there are people, there are different ways of doing it. And mm. they're, you know, cause see, I have to be diplomatic sometimes. So there are okay. times I'll, I'll see something and they'll say, you know, this is the way we do it. And, and I, I say, you know, that's the way of doing it, you know, and, but you know, what I want to say is, no, um, <laughs> people think you have to take it apart, but you don't. Mm -hmm. and where where this came from is I have a friend from my San Francisco days who had a forty thousand square foot warehouse of vintage clothing. Oh, and I mean, some of the stuff she has would just make your make your eyes pop. She had some fabulous things. She had a rack of bias cut dresses. Oh, and she was distressed because you know. They were coming to shreds. I said, "We need to get the information from those dresses." The oh, yes. Completely fall apart. Oh no. Nice. So, in a classic rub off, this is one of the things mm. that they sort of teach at FIT, but I'm sort of slowly kind of getting that out of there. You would put straight pins all along the seams, and you would get a piece of muslin, and you'd line the grain lines up, and then you'd take a wax chalk or whatever and yeah. rub. Well, if I had done that to these dresses, they would never have survived. I would never <laughs> have gotten. So I was sitting there at my work table, looking at these dresses, thinking, okay, hmm, it has to be transparent. I figured, silk organza, because you can see through it. And yes. that is yeah. kind of where my method came from. And it is so accurate that the last two jackets that I've copied, I haven't made a muslin, because I know it's going to work. Get the information, I draft all the pieces, I make it up, it fits. So yeah, it's, 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 because if you're ripping seams, first off, you don't necessarily want to lose the garment. You just no. want to cut. If you're ripping seams, you're stretching them. You're distorting them. Yeah, it's distorting them. You have the garment intact. Then you can take all. You can me measure your finished seam lengths so that you know once you get the information to the paper, you can go back to the garment mm -hmm. and check and see. Okay, on the garment it measures this. It should measure this on the pattern. And then you you know the little tweaks that you need to do to make everything match up and do and and really isn't that just a whole book in itself and i bet you 
what's the name of the book that teaches it's you called, how to do that? It's called uh, Making Patterns from Existing Garments. It's one of my PDF books on my website. And wow. Book- and you've got loads of PDF books on your website. Yes. And you know, it, it, because see where, where the PDF idea came from is my first book, which was called Designer Techniques. And I loathed the title and I loathed the cover. I hated it. But you know, your first book, they, they kind of say, we're going to do what we're going to do. And so it, through a chain of circumstances, I had to force it out of print. Long story. Mm-hmm. And so I had people asking me, well, where, where can I get a copy? And I said, well, you know, I have, you know, I had some remainder copies and then I was out. And so one of my students said, well, why don't you put it on PDF? Yeah. I didn't know any, I, I was, I'm late to the computer game. So I, you know, I was like, eh, no, I don't want to do the computers. But she, so I asked her, you know, I said, well, you know, I like a printed book. And she said, well, PDF, you can print it. And then yes. she said, where do most of your inquiries for this book come from? And I said, email. And she said, precisely my point. Oh. So it's my first book, which I sold, I made more money from that with a P, as a PDF than I did when it was an actual book. Of course. And so then in 2007, 2008, Creative Publishing approached me to do sort of a reissue reworking of that book. And so I said, well, you know, there are two things I want. I want a big fat advance and I want that particular photo that's on the cover, on the cover. They were like, well, you know, we don't. I said, you know what? I don't have to do this. It's working really well as it is. So if I'm going to do it, I want the big fat advance and I want that picture on the cover because did I mention I don't have to do this? Cause you know what? I don't have to do this. <laughs> and it was good. So from there in 2002, and this was during, you know, after nine 11, it kind of hit, it hit me a little later. June of 2002 was the first time in my, my business that I had not, I didn't have a thing on my calendar. So, you know, there was a part of me that said, okay, you can panic and run around with your hair on fire, or you can sit down and you can learn how to do this damn computer thing and you can get something done. And so I yeah. wrote a lot and the basic sleeve. And what the, the liberating thing about a PDF book is you're not limited by the physical structure of a book. You can have, and, and I have an illustration for every step. You can, you know, I've, I've had people email me from Tasmania and say, <laughs> no, Where is that? Yeah, <laughs> you know, um, you know, I mean, all over and, 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 you know, with my limited English and all the pictures, I can do it. That's the point. And so, you know, for me, it was just, it's time. I yeah. had to learn how to do an illustration and I had to you know learn how to do Photoshop and all of that. But, you know, once I learned how to do that, See, I understood that, okay, if I learn how to do that, then I get to keep all the money. Yes. But if I need someone else to do it, then I have to bleed that out at the beginning. Mm. And then I have to wait until, you know, I sell X number of copies to get that back. So, <laughs> yeah. And so it's, you know, I have, I want to say 15 PDF. Yeah. And see, yeah. these days, you know, because it started out as CDs, but these days, yeah. it's all download. Yes. So they email me and, you know, they send me a PayPal thing and I send them the download links and they, you know, they, they expire after a week. So like download it within a week. I love so, that you, you have an expiry. Otherwise no one would even do it. They get it there and they think, right, I've got that in the vault, but it's best to do something with it yeah. and read mm-hmm. it because you've yeah. wanted it. You don't just yeah. think, it's like going to the gym. You can get your membership, but if you mm-hmm. don't turn up, you're never going to get yeah. the value out of it. It's exactly. true. Yeah. And well, I, I go to the gym every morning. Oh, good job. As we can well, tell. Well, you know, it's just because my husband sometimes says, well, why don't you sleep in? I said, then I know I won't go. He says, yeah. you'll, go, you'll go later. No, I won't. No. Uh, you know, no. I get up, I brush my teeth, I go to the gym. Like tomorrow, I'm, gonna, I'm teaching all day. So mm. I have to get up at 5.30. And so oh. my students, you know, and actually in the morning class, they're really, you know, they're really lively this semester, thank God. Um, some semesters, they're like, oh, I'm so tired. Like, okay, I don't want to hear it because I got up at 5.30 to get to the gym before I got here. And I yes. got here on time. So yes. I don't want to hear it. That's exactly it. And people don't realize that fabric gives you energy and colour gives you energy. And I I see that you've got a lovely, beautiful, intricate knit from the Sony. Is that right? Yes. Stunning. What are your favourite colours? Tell us, what are you drawn to? Oh, that's a tough decision. Um, I, you know, when I was in college, I was sort of that natural fibre, natural colours, you know, kind of guy. And my grandma had like magpie taste and she you know she did all these crazy colors and i remember she wanted to crochet me an afghan and i'm like ivory and navy please and just it was like that's it 
<laughs> and, you know, I wish I had just let her go because yeah. I look at some of the colors I use now and it's like, it's exactly what my grandma would have done. Yes. Um, I, t you know, I tend to wear color. Yeah. It, you know, it's in your DNA. Where, yeah. Well, yeah. But, you know, there was a period when I was wearing black a lot, but, you know, that part of that's a, a city thing, you know, wearing black is practical. But, you know, I, I just, as I get older, I just like, I think, okay, more color, please. I'll, you know. I'll do it. And, 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 you know, the thing is, people say, you know, I could never get away with wearing that. And, and what I say to them is, you have to wear it like it's the most normal thing in the world. Yes. If you're self-conscious about it, you're going to look uncomfortable and then, then it will look ridiculous. But if you just wear it like, oh, doesn't everybody wear this? Um, yes. Yeah. You, you've got some real classic outfits, jackets. The How tats. big is your wardrobe? Mm. For goodness oh, sake. It's 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 extensive my husband i mean this sort of kind of precipitated the proposal because i hadn't planned on proposing that evening um he was saying you know well you know we've been seeing each other for three years and you know what do you think about moving in and i said okay well first off my business is structured so it pays my living expenses i said i and if we moved in i would need my own i would need a bedroom for my wardrobe and then I would want my own bathroom and he said how much do you have I said you have no idea <laughs> stock a small boutique I really can't it's all kind of kept in closets and cupboards and boxes but I pull I pulled it all out once just to see and I was kind of astonished at how much there was wow. so you know it's storage is everything and so so yeah so you know I, I said to him well you know you're the man I would marry but I don't want to live with you and then <laughs> we later he was having the where is this relationship going conversation and I finally said you know I said you were the man I would marry he said yeah you said that before you asked me to marry you I said do you want me to ask you to marry me? he said yeah I said all right then will you marry me? he said yeah and I was like wait <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I, I think I just proposed and, and we just kind of sat there and he said I thought I was going to propose and it was going to be romantic I said well you know honey things just happen the way they happen and yeah. I said we're engaged so yeah that's how it happened, but it, it, it all kind of circled back to my, the size of my wardrobe. Well, you, you got rid of some patterns, so you're certainly not going to get rid of those clothes, are you? Well, that was, yeah, oh, I was so mad at myself for getting rid of that pattern. But yeah, yeah. as a rule, I don't get rid of, get rid of patterns. I'm, I'm in the same boat. It's like my heart starts beating. I'm an 80s pattern girl, and when I see those patterns, I, my heart flutters. I feel like I'm going dizzy from the thrill. And yeah. I thought, how could I possibly give them to anyone who doesn't understand that? It's true. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. Well, you know, the, the clothing now, I'm, I'm, my students are saying 1992 is back. Oh, cool. Wow. Love it. So, you know, I, I, I you know, because I like to kind of keep in touch, you know, to figure out, okay, what's, what's happening. But what's kind of funny with my students at FIT is... Well, I don't know if you ever saw the blog post I did on slashing jeans. Oh, I'm thinking about it. Was, it was like a it step and a repeat pattern. And those jeans over the years have really aged. They're really shaggy now. I mean, they're kind of deteriorating, but in a beautiful sort of way. And I wore them to class one day. And, you know, my students were looking at it. And I found out last week that one of my students went home and did that to a pair of oh, jeans. Yes. I was like, Oh, so you think I'm cool, huh? It's <laughs> <laughs> kind of funny, you know, because, cause, you know, some of their professors, you know, they're like, oh, they're just old people. But I, I have to remind them that I am indeed 62 years old. And so oh. don't, don't video this under fluorescent light because it's just bad. Um, <laughs> I have good light. I have, I have nylon tool over the lens on the camera <laughs> on the computer so that it you know, kind of smooths everything out. Well, it's working top lighting so that this doesn't show quite so much you know and that's that's it you you are timeless yeah you are timeless <laughs> timeless yeah it's so <laughs> exciting to see you in real life and coming up in february 2020 20. 2020 20. tell us what's going on yes well that uh, we're going to the sewing expo in mm -hmm. Puyallup. And I'm going to be doing what I call Kenneth D. King's Greatest Hits. So it's it's a slideshow of kind of the, the good stuff from when I started my career forward. Um, so that's on the Friday night, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And then I'm going to be in the booth with Rylas on Saturday. And then I'm going to fly out Saturday evening. So uh, it's going to be a very short trip. 
Well, I'm excited because I'm going and I'm actually going to be in that booth squeezing in as much as I can. But I think we'll have to tag team because it's going to be a very tight booth and there'll be people lining up for for who knows how long. Are you bringing books to sign or what's happening? Well, we're going to have the bags there. Oh, and, oh good. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. I should ask her. I, I you know, because I'm terrible sometimes. I don't think too far forward because, you know, like, okay, for me, I had to get this ball gown thing done for my friend yes exhibit. and now i got to get this class done for craftsy for blueprint now and so yes. you know it's I, I i try to plan forward but i don't look yes. too far ahead because and my husband sometimes he'll say well when are you traveling I'm like, oh sweetie i don't keep that in my head i have a paper calendar you know and so if there's if there's like a, a piece of paper that's an airplane reservation on yeah. taped calendar i know i'm traveling and so every now and then I have to text him like, okay, here are my dates when I'm gone. So, uh, you know, plan accordingly. I just had a great thought for your PDF books. Yeah. You could do the front page of just 15 of the books mm -hmm. and sign just the front page. And if they were going to pay for them, then they can download the rest and attach it to the front page. That is a great idea. Thank you. I think I might, I might do that. That's a good idea, man. Yeah, go great for idea. it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, there we go. And see, that'll save me having to carry all these books. Because see, that is one of the yeah. advantages of you know the PDF books. I also have flash drives. You know, if anyone wants flash drives. Yeah. But you know, the advantage because you don't because before even with the CD books, that was a lot to put in the luggage. Yes. And so uh, you know, it's it's better. Technology sometimes it makes our life easier. There you go. That's it. Love collaboration between the two of you right now. Yeah. Yes. You know, this is kind of amazing, you know, because, and I have to apologize for last week. I was sitting here like, you know, like, okay, I'm ready. And then, you know, I went and, and I emailed you. And I thought, oh boy, do it. I do, I feel stupid now. You know, and I noticed the date it was the 13th and the date. Yeah. Yeah. I know. And I got the email and I thought, oh, what have I done wrong? And I no, thought, I've got to no, jump in there now. It was yeah. me. And, and I don't drink. So I don't, I can't blame it on that. I was just, you know, I, I just, because there's sometimes, see, I tend to be mm. early for things because I don't want to be late. Yeah. And yes. I, my mind, you know, don't forget, you have this thing. Yeah. And my mind, you know, skips like next week you have this thing. So yeah. it happened there. I felt kind of silly. Oh, well, but I, you were flat out last week. Flat, like, yes. was, like I said, you were flat out like a lizard drinking. You really yeah. were. Oh, look, I've turned up at parties a week early and a week later and been fully convinced that I was right. So I thought, I'm glad I'm not the only one. No, no, it happens. Oh. Yeah. 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 How did you get yourself into the podcasting? Cause... Okay, well, the podcast, the book, the novel, All Grown Up Now, A Friendship yes. in Three Acts, on Amazon. <laughs> um, that was her. And, and people, because I have a friend who's writing one, and, you know, she has this mistaken idea that, it has to come out as polished prose on the first go. I said, oh, honey, I started working on this book. And this this was actually what kind of got me through this rough period mm. was it was kind of like a talking cure because, and, and there, you know, there were things that didn't get into the novel that subsequently I've used. And so the, the, the novel, you know, I would approach literary agents, you know, and I would hear, you know, less of this, more of this. And I'd say, okay, well, if you do, if I do that, will you take me on? And they'd say, no. It's like, well, then why, why are you even wasting your breath with this? Yeah. You know? And so I finally just said, you know, to hell with it. I'm just going to do it myself because we have the means to do that now. Yes, and we do. So that was the novel. And then the screenplay came from the novel. The screenplay is act three. So if you're not at act three yet, you know, the screenplay is primarily act three where I go and kidnap my friend from Los Angeles. Yeah. And I did, I had you know, yeah. his, his crazy ex had guns and it was, I really had to just kind of accept that. Okay. If something goes horribly wrong, at least my roots are done and I'm wearing good underwear and I have a good car. Um, yes. Yeah, yes. You know, it, so it was crazy. But so, so I wrote the screenplay and, you know, so to kind of get a bigger kind of to get the story out because mm. really, you know, this is a story of a friendship. It's also a story of gay domestic violence. Yes. And domestic violence is, there's no gender, there's no sexual preference, there's no social class. It's violence. I watched my mother go through it when I was a kid. Yes. And so the screenplay, you know, I, I worked on the screenplay and then 
I was talking to a friend of mine who had this magazine called Bear World Magazine. It's mm -hmm. an online magazine. And I said, I'd like to just serialize it on your magazine. And he said, people don't read online. He said, what about a podcast? That's where it came from. So oh. I just started researching, you know, and I went to lynda.com to find out how you do a podcast. <laughs> and it's so funny because my husband, he's so helpful. He, he's kind of involved in theater and, you know, that world as well yes. as interior design. And so he was saying something about, well, you know, I know people who could read it. I said, I said, honey, I do this as part of my livelihood. Mm. You know, when, when I did Sewing Today all those years ago, I learned how to be on TV from Miss America 1961, Nancy Fleming, her talent was sewing. Yes. And it's on, <laughs> on YouTube, you can see it. And so I learned how to do voiceover. I said, you know, that part I can do. It's mm -hmm. just the, how do you get it into the computer yes. and mix it up? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I have GarageBand and I went to this place, the electronics place to get the, the you know, equipment? The microphone is key, you yes. know, and the microphone is really funny because my sister, when she started listening to it, she said it took her a little bit to realize that it was me. Oh. And I, because you're used to hearing me on a telephone or in person, but this microphone makes my voice much more velvety. And that was what I, I told the Ooh. guy, that this it is does. the voice you're dealing with. I want it to be better. And so he you know, fixed me the right microphone. So yeah, so the podcast really started out and, and Judy Newcomb, my editor of Threads Magazine, because the book did need some editing. And so I said, Judy, okay, I need you. I'm going to hire you to edit it and break it up into sections. And that's kind of where it started. So it, episodes one through 29 mm -hmm. are the, the, the novel. And then after I got all those done, I strung them all together mm. to make the audiobook. So the audiobook is episodes one through 29. And so then people were saying, well, you're going to keep going, aren't you? And I said, mm. oh, yes, I have to now. And so the, the <laughs> next part, it's called season two, Tales of a Checkered Past, because yes. I have a checkered past. I have a very <laughs> past. And, you know, so I could take, I could kind of go off on these stories that didn't really fit into the novel. Yeah. And, you know, I, I can talk about things like the thing in Toronto with this gal, or I could kind of go off on my teacher, Simone, or I could talk about when I was arrested for not having my inspection sticker in Oklahoma City. Oh, I or, love that. I mean, that I one could, was I good. Could, I, you know, I was like, officer, do your duty, because he <laughs> I was- know. I could just visualize yeah, that. <laughs> I was right on the back of the motorcycle with him, but I didn't, sadly. But, um, you know, and, and so there, you know, there, there are, and they are definitely, you know, at least R rated some of them. There's there's the one yeah. that I, I call my uh it was my one and only walk of shame, which it didn't involve misbehavior and, you know, oh. wearing the same clothes the next day, but it was <laughs> my one and only walk of shame. So, you know, I can kind of go off on those uh different things. And so those I re I release about every couple weeks. So yes. the one that I'm actually gonna be recording after I'm finished here yeah. is my dog Daisy. Because I had one perfect dog. Her name was Daisy. She was a buff colored cocker spaniel and she raised the bar very high for perfect dogs. And, you know, cause everyone thinks mm -hmm. their dog is perfect. And this is one of those times where everyone can be right. Their dog is perfect. Everyone's dog is perfect. So uh, yeah, so that's the podcast. And, Wonderful. and it, it's really part of it, you know, really is just, you know, because one of the things I, I'm kind of looking at is like part of the whole thing is I'm a storyteller because in class you are. I yeah. tell stories. And, you know, my students, it's kind of interesting because, you know, these, I really, you know, it's interesting how groups have a personality. Last spring, it was the same topic, same time of day, once on Wednesday, once on Thursday. The Wednesday class is like going to a party. These kids are great. The Thursday class is like going to the library. It's because I couldn't get any kind of reaction out of them. The Wednesday class, when I showed them Linda Maynard's technique for the invisible zipper, they cheered like they were watching a touchdown. The, the Thursday class, it was like, and I thought, it's very strange. So yeah, so the, the, especially, so I have the Wednesday class in the mornings on Thursday. The Thursday, the afternoon class, they're a little more lively. They're actually, they're warming up now because the final projects are due and they're realizing that, oh, you can ask him oh. about how to make something and he'll explain it and you'll be able to make it. And, and, you know, which that's why, but uh, yeah, these the kids in the morning, especially, you know, we talk about things like um, multiple revenue streams or yes. you know, 
I mean, I, 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 you know, I talk about my life experience. I talk things like my mother's lawyer, Harry. Harry looked like George Burns. He sounded like George Burns. He didn't smoke a cigar. And Harry was the voice of reason when I was growing up. And, you know, I, he was the one who had the it gets better talk. We yeah. didn't know about that at the time. But, you know, he sat me down when I was 14 and basically said, you know, I see something and you just need to know some things. So we're going to have some conversations. Mm -hmm. And I just remember he said, it sucks right now. But you just have to last because one day you'll be able to leave this and do what you want to do. And that was what I needed to hear. And yeah. one time I had to testify in court when I was 13. Very long story. But he said, he sat me down. He said, okay, two things that are going to serve you now and in the future. First thing is if someone asks you a question, you answer the question and then you shut up. And if the answer is yes, it's yes, full stop. Don't give them anything else. Drove my mother crazy. She asked me a question and I would answer the question. I would stand there and she'd look at me. I'm like, what? I answered your question. <laughs> she never, he never told her he did this. And so the other thing he said was, if someone says something and it requires a response and you don't know what to say, you say, indeed. Nice. And that has saved my butt. <laughs> <laughs> One time I was on Martha Stewart and I knew that Martha Stewart and I were not going to hang out in the green room that we we're I was going to have to just hit the ground running and get some sort of rapport going with her. So I wore my Fortuny jacket because I'd done some research. And oh, I love that like, jacket too. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, we got introduced probably three minutes before we went on, you know, and I put the lapel up and I said, Fortuny, but you knew that already. And she went into this charming little reverie about how she loved Fortuny and she has it in her apartment in New York and she has it in her house in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. And moments before we went on, she looked at me square in the eyes and she said, did you know that cat pee dissolves the gold paint off that fabric? <laughs> yes, you heard me right, cat pee. And I said, indeed. And they said, you're on. And we were off and running and <laughs> not remember I did what? well they, they were all happy but but you know the only thing I could think of the entire time I was on that show was there's only one way she could know that oh. hasn't she figured out how to breed cats that don't pee I mean come on so oh. yeah but indeed if you're indeed. at a loss for words because he said it moves the ball forward but you haven't said anything you know Kenneth King you are a king because not only do you preach it, but you live it, you do it. You've gone to the final frontier where no man would go <laughs> and after you've done it. You've created, you've learned along the way, you share what you learn and you empower others. And even with this new Barbie episode of your life, you're also attracting people to the sewing community who would do more than what they would do if they never saw those Barbies and those clothes. We are so thankful for all mm. the years of experience. We're so thankful for the entertainment, the colour, the outlandish life that you've had and that you've still got to go through. Mm -hmm. I love that you attack the new things that are coming out and that you help others learn that there are simpler ways of doing things and you don't have to be perfect. And... Uh, the sewing community thanks you. We're entertained by you. And I have to say, I think we love you. Yes. Oh, well, thank Big you. Time. That's very good of you to say. So thanks for being part of our podcast. My pleasure. I'm thank going you. to re-listen to this, I can tell you, quite a few <laughs> times because there's some pearls of wisdom in there. Did you ever, Did because I did this thing in Boston in August for the ASG, yeah. and it's on, their, it's on their website. And it, it basically was an hour with Kenneth King. Oh. And, you know, it was, it was kind of funny because, you know, it was, we just kind of got going and afterwards the gal said, oh my God, I'm going to have to watch this because there was so much. And, um, yeah, it, it's, it's what I do. Very thankful. Oh, my pleasure. At this point, we're about to end this podcast. Indeed. While we were thanking Kenneth, our conversation became quite sewing focused. Here's how it went. So, so we finished? Yes, Are we, we finished. finished. For you? We're finished, yeah. No, I'm hey. I'm just God's I'm like I read through all the questions and I thought we need to do something that isn't um what you've done before. Okay. 
because and we have done something that you have yeah. well, the way we've That's done okay. it yeah no, okay. thank you yeah. very pleasure. entertaining very entertaining yes. and i'm sure that people will be getting those pdfs and yes. going through the list to see what they need because you tell it as it is you're not putting all that fluff around mm. information just to get money you are actually giving people solutions and that is key that's what we want that's what we need and that's what makes us better sewers yeah well thank you and also thank you for um uh, two years ago we were stuck in calgary airport yes. um and that's when i was watching you um because you were stuck in the airport so i was watching you on craftsy and oh, i think okay. I, I posted something and then you reposted it as if it was um airline entertainment something like oh, that okay right? yeah anyway well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. You know, the craftsy classes are kind of fun. Um, oh. I'm, I'm looking forward to doing another. Their production values, wow. The first one, the jeans class, mm -hmm. was it was in an old tortilla factory. And we had to stop recording when the trains would pass because, you know, it was it was not fancy. They rented someone's loft, and we had to be done by a certain time because they were coming home from work. But now they have these big deluxe studios, and they have mm. a teleprompter, and yeah, it's pretty, fa pretty fancy. Oh, look, and even just from the classes that you've run um, on, mm. cra on Craftsy or Blueprint or whatever, you've always done the directions so that, you know, the way you've um, made notes on patterns so you know which way it is. Like, yeah. I think it was the pocket. I just yeah. found that so valuable. Mm. Well, yeah. You see, I'm slightly dyslexic. Mm. And I found that you know, there are certain things I know to do in a certain way so I don't get confused. Mm. You know, like, for example, if you have a double-sided fabric, if you're doing two, mm -hmm. two part sleeves, yeah. I know that I lay them out, you know, mirror image and may lay everything out mirror image so that I don't end up with two lefts or two rights. You know, these are just things, and I tell people there's no shame in marking everything. It's, you know, yeah. it, you either mark it with something that's going to disappear or it's going to be in a lining, so no one cares. Mm, that's but right. it, it just, because time is money. My teacher, Simone, used to always say, time is money, time yes. is money. And, you know, it's, so these are things I know that it may seem like I'm taking a little more time in the setup, but I don't have to go backtrack and do it later. That's right. So having all of those directions is just, it's useful. So what would your advice be to someone who's starting out in sewing and they don't know where to start? What would be the key piece of advice that you think would be the most helpful? I would say, you know, don't don't start at the deep end. I had a student who started, she wanted to do a tailor jacket to begin with. Don't do that. Um, mm. What I would say is, you know, start with a skirt or a vest or a blouse. But the thing is, just keep doing it. You know, mm. they're but part of what you learn as you go along is you learn when you can save it you learn when you have to just start over but you just have to keep cranking them out like sausages Ooh. this gal i mean she took 18 months to do this jacket and there was a point when i thought oh just finish it please mm. and it was okay but it wasn't brilliant because it was her first piece and she said how did you get so good i said it wasn't by taking 18 months on one piece mm. you know you just have to just keep going and there are times even now i'll make a tailor jacket just to keep my chops you know I'll, you know do something just to keep my chops because mm. you know it is like exercise it is wonderful advice yeah, and don't advice. be afraid to attempt the next step up so when you get the basics worked out taking the next step to the next area of expertise is the yeah. way to go isn't it and and don't worry about ruining fabric because that's the dues you pay for being proficient yeah yeah great advice thanks for your time yeah thank you so much for your time today and last week it's been fun <laughs> <laughs> we enjoyed it i'm sure i i was thrilled i thought oh good it's not going to be real starchy we're going to have some fun on this interview mm -hmm. and yeah. it has been so good. much fun yeah i've been trying not to laugh loud because i know <laughs> we've had um people <laughs> say that they don't like hearing too much laughter on podcasts well then they should have their own podcast that's right exactly do it your own way exactly. yeah yeah <laughs> sorry i'll stop being excited no this is good thank you <laughs> my pleasure As to you. okay then I, oh. i'm gonna go record a new podcast and listeners that brings us to the end of our two wonderful Kenneth D. King 
podcast. He's a wonderful bloke, ergo his podcasts are wonderful. Go and listen to Kenneth's All Grown Up Now podcast series and have a good binge listen to them. Right now, you can book into Soul Expo at Piala to meet Kenneth D. King in person if you were considering going to Soul Expo in 2020. Kenneth will be appearing at their Friday Night Live show on the 28th of February. You can purchase a separate ticket for this show and get tickets to meet Kenneth on Saturday with Rylas Bod and our very own Anne Wally. This episode of Soul Organised Style Podcast was produced by me, Maria Theoharis, Anne Wally and the amazing Kenneth D. King. Sound from All Grown Up Now Podcast used with permission from kennethdking.com. So Organised Style Podcast, spelt with an S, not a Z, is available on our website, soorganisedstylepodcast.com, with all the links to this podcast. And I'm saying all the links because there were a lot of things that Kenneth talked about in this podcast that I know you're dying to find out about. You can also find our podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio and CastBox. Subscribe to our podcast to listen and tell your friends about our podcast. Thanks again for joining us.